Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial, my name's Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over part 2 of how to make enemy AI in the Blender Game Engine. So in part 1 we went and got our character and we gave him a whole bunch of animations which we will later use depending on what state our enemy is in. So if you haven't done part 1, definitely consider doing that. It will be very helpful for you. However, if you don't want to, there is a starting.blend in the description if you guys just want to go ahead and download that instead. But apart from that, let's go ahead and get on into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this to object mode. And then I'm going to press T to get rid of this toolbar, like so. Then I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to add a cube, like so. Now, this cube is going to be the enemy's movement. So I'm going to press numpad 1. And we want it just above the red line, so somewhere around there. And we'll press S to make it roughly the size of both his legs. And then we can go ahead and we can call it enemy movement. There we go. And then we're going to select his rig, like so. Hold down shift and select the gun as well. And then we want to drag him all the way up, uh, right to the bottom of the movement cube. So I'm going to press numpad 3. And that looks nearly right. I'm just going to bring it a little bit more up, so somewhere around there. Then I'm going to select my movement cube and move that up as well. And as you can see, the bottom of the foot is just slightly out, so I'm going to do that again. Select the rig, select the gun, numpad 1, scroll in a bit, and move it up just a bit. So something like that, and that should be good. So to ensure there isn't any weird physical glitches or anything like that, what we're going to have to do is select our rig here, go along to the physics panel, make sure that's on no collision, then we'll select our player here, and you also have to set him to no collision just in case. This gun here doesn't really matter because it's not touching the movement cube, so it's not going to spaz out and fly off into the distance. So you can leave the gun at static if you want to. Then the next thing we're going to do is with the gun selected, I'm going to hold down shift, select the rig as well. So we'll just select the rig, hold down shift, and select the gun. Then hold down shift again, and this time we want to select the movement cube, like so. So you want the movement cube to be yellow and the other two to be orange. Then we're going to press control P and parent to object like so. Now what that basically does is now, if we move this cube over here, we can play the animations uh, on the spot wherever the cube is. So as you can see, just scrolling along the timeline there has sort of set off the gun a little bit. So we're going to have to add some animations for this first of all. So at frame zero, it already has one. So I'm going to go into the toolbar just by pressing T otherwise, then go to animation and remove all the keyframes we had in there previously. Then I'm going to press T again to get rid of the toolbar. Then I'm going to select my enemy movement, press Control A and apply scale. Then do one last thing and that is under here, select dynamic under the physics. And if you want to, you can add collision bounds. So the next thing I'm going to do is select the gun here and we're going to go ahead to frame 20 when the animations start and I'm just going to bring it up like so so maybe somewhere around here and press numpad 1, numpad 3 just to sort of check what it looks like from other angles so maybe something like that maybe we'll press RX to rotate on the X axis like so and GZ and We'll do something like that. Okay, so when you're happy with what it looks like, then you can press I and insert location and rotation. And so to save us doing this every single time we move anything, what we can also do is down here, click the record button, then select location rotation, and now whenever we move this gun, it will automatically insert a keyframe. So we'll select our rig here and we'll go to the next one which is frame 40. So we'll select our gun and we're on frame 40 already. And if we just scroll along the bottom here you can see where the movement is going. So it's just slightly off on the X axis. So I'm going to go to frame 40 and just move it slightly like so and rotate it a little bit. So something like that then I and it will insert the keyframes for us just in case. I'm going to select the rig again just press the up arrow on the keyboard and it'll go to the next keyframe then I'll select my gun and there's frame 60 
So we just want to see the difference of movement there as well. Okay, so back to frame 60. Then I'm going to press RZ to rotate on the Z axes. Then I'm going to press GX and then X again to do it on the local axes. And I'm just going to bring it in a little bit like that. So tap X twice and it will do it in the local axes instead of the global. So there we go, something like that. That should have inserted keyframes for us. Then we're going to scroll along to the next frame, which is frame 80. Uh, so just around here, and as you can see, it's only moved a really small amount. So just moving to the left a bit more, uh, like so. So frame 80, and then GXX. Move it in a bit, and then RZ, and rotate a bit. And that will add in our keyframes there. So then we're going to scroll along to the next frame. As you can see, the animation ends at, I think, 120. So what I'm going to try and do is actually move the whole gun and just have a keyframe from frame 80 to frame 120. So just there. And then frame 120. Um, GXX. Move it in. GZ. Um, and then RZ, maybe a bit like that, and something like that. So now, he brings it back, like so. As you can see at frame 80, this should actually be leaning down with the player. So that starts happening around frame 40, so I'm going to press RX. Rotate it a bit, GZ, move down, and go to frame 60. And one more thing, just to make this easier, is I'm going to press Control Alt Shift C, and I'm going to do Origin to Geometry, and this will just center it and make it a little bit easier to work with. Then I'm going to do RX, um, and then GY, GX, move it down a bit, and then RX again because it's meant to sort of move down. I'll go to the next keyframe, which is here, and obviously that needs to move, be moved down a whole lot. Uh, X, and move it down something like that. So now we have uh, the gun going down. Front 20 is a bit high, so move that one down as well. Uh, X, possibly, and then RZ. GX, GY, GX again, and maybe something like that. As you can see, frame 40, it is moving upwards. So again, just going to move it down a bit. So I think that's just this one. I'm going to press GY, just to bring it forward a bit, and smooth out the animation. There we go, and he's brought it back up again. Frame 120 needs some tweaking, so down a bit. G Y, oh, G Y, G X, G Z, G Y, think something out of that, and there we go. That that's looking a bit smoother. So it's still a little bit off. You can obviously tell, but I mean, you can you can spend hours tweaking this stuff if it isn't from the same rig. Uh, but yeah, so I'm I'm happy with that for the walking animation or whatever. Now we'll move on to the rotating, so if we select our rig here, the next one is frame 130, so I'm going to select this, and it's I think it's starting from the same spot, so frame 120, and we'll just duplicate those frames uh, 10 ahead, so A to deselect in the graph editor window, making sure you're on 120, then press Control K, and then Shift D, GX10. Like so. There we go. And um, then the next one, if we select the rig again, is 160. So select this. And now we basically just need to move it like it was before. So RZ. And you can just use these arrows to drag if you don't want to use hotkeys. And just GY. And I think that was sort of, we sort of had that same angle going before. Um, so I'm just going to press GY and RZ a bit, and maybe somehow that will work. So there we go. That is pretty close. Um, just a little bit more tweaking. So 
rotating it a bit more and we'll try it again maybe we'll give it a little bit more and then GY to bring it back a bit and something like that looks like it will work well okay now we just need the animation back so turning the other way over here we'll select our rig again so I'm gonna press the up arrow that will take me to 160 which we were on just before but we want to get to 200 so up arrow again and this time we'll select our gun and we need to rotate it um, RZ quite a bit so something like that and then we'll just use these arrows to realign it like so if you want to move it around on the local axes you can do that easily by clicking here selecting local and that sort of moves it based on the actual geometry of the weapon and not just on the global axes so something like that I'm going to move it down a bit so I've got the gun facing upwards in this one and maybe something like that and then that should have inserted some keyframes for us you can see there's a bit of a gap there first of all here this needs to be moved uh, this way a bit more so you can just drag it if you want to and then RZ and this way just slightly something like that okay and then the next thing we're going to do as you can see in the middle, sort of halfway through this animation, it's just sort of not in the right place. So I'm actually going to go somewhere near halfway, maybe 180. And I'm going to realign it. So maybe something like that. And RZ, GY, GX, GY again, GX again, RZ. And yeah, just a whole bunch of tweaking to try and make it look... Uh, as seamless as possible. Again, you can sort of see how much work animating stuff for games actually is, but something like that should work fine. So there we go, backwards and forwards, like so. It is slightly off, but not too much of an issue. It looks fairly smooth. Then back to the armature here, and there we go. Then back to starting position, which is, I believe, frame 130 so we want it to move to 230 so just 100 up so go to frame 30 like so then select our gun A to deselect everything control K and then press shift D GX 100 and that will make a new keyframe over here so now he has a sort of twisting animation like that which finishes I'm going to do one thing though on frame 200 and that is twist the gun a bit more because it looks slightly off. Um, yeah, maybe something like that. The handle was just sort of sticking outside. Now the next thing we want to do if we select our rig is, what is he starting to play now? Just the running animations which go to frame 280 and then we're going to go to 230 a to deselect, control K to select the one keyframe. Then we're going to press shift D and GX5, like so. And then now we're going to, we can do 10 frames ahead of time. On the rig we had going all the way up to 245. So we'll do the same for the gun. So back to top view and now we'll move it around again. So GX, we'll just drag it, RZ, or because you're in top view you can just press R and we'll move it something like that then we're going to do 10 frames up so 255 press enter and now we're going to have to move them all the way back here it is getting a bit higher so I'm actually going to go to 245 and make sure it's in a similar position so we might need to bring it down a bit here just to get it to match the hands properly then I'm going to move it up and so 255 I'm going to bring it back uh, GY, GX, RZ GX, GZ and then RY and we're going to move it up like so so that's how my other that should be good then the next frame 265 I think it is press enter and numpad 7 we'll just drag between the two it's only moved a really small amount, so maybe at 255 we can move it back a bit, like so. Then 265, 
and press enter and we'll just move it back something like that again okay and then 275 for the next one and it's just done the same sort of small notch but back so we'll do the same after you've animated 275 I think that is the sprinting animation done so then we can start moving on to the ducking behind cover so 285 and numpad 7 R to rotate bring the gun over here somewhere and now we'll just adjust it something like that rotate it a bit more okay something like so and then press I to insert then I'm going to select my rig again and you notice 290 is where it starts so I'm going to select my gun and we have animated 285 which I don't think is quite right so we're going to have to go back and we actually just want to set a keyframe at 280 so I'm going to select this delete the one from 285 just by removing it then 275 we want 280 and up at 7 and I don't think much has changed no it's exactly the same so 280 we can just press I to insert and it will just do the original spot then the next one was 290 I think according to the rig yep 290 so now we can grab the gun rotate it and move it to where it is over here so GZ GX GY RZ GY, GX, RZ, GY, so maybe something like that. Here we go, he sprung his gun round. And the next keyframe, according to the rig, is frame 300. So we'll select our gun, go to frame 300. And basically, we're going to numpad 7 to go into top view. We'll rotate it here first. So something like that. Then we'll press GZ bring it down and we'll bring it down to a desirable location like so now I'm just going to tweak it a little bit more and something like that seems to look just fine so maybe that one is a bit easier than the others okay that seems good and next one for the rig is uh, 310 I think from 300 to 310 so we'll select this and um, move it down again. So numpad 7, do the top view first. So something like so. And then just GZ to bring it down on the Z axes. And we want it down the bottom here. Something like that. And GY, GX, and uh, RX, and GZ. And something like that should be good okay and as you can see the top here is letting us down a just a little bit so I'm gonna move it in a bit as you can see it sort of went through the player's hand like right now um, which isn't too good of a look so try and bring it around here a bit and then the bottom one should be something like that okay cool so back to the rig and we're gonna go to frame 315 and he's back up to the starting position so what I think I'm going to do is where we have another starting position is at frame 130 or 230 uh, that's like the default so 315 is the same one so on our gun we're going to go to 230 A to deselect make sure you're on 230 then press ctrl K and then shift D GX and we want to move it up um, we'll just do 100 for now so 100 press enter that will be our keyframe over here so this is our keyframe over here right now and we need to move it back to 315 so GX minus 15 that will move it all the way back here so we're back to the original starting position like so cool so there we go that is most of it done now I think we just need the dying animations so yep there we have a headshot one oh no here's our melee animation as well so I'll quickly do that select the rig go to frame 325 then we'll select the gun here and press RX 
we rotate on the x-axis, then ry, and we'll just want to bring it up somewhere like it was before, and then maybe we want to have the uh, butt of the gun sticking out a bit, so your player, the enemy sort of has something to hit the player with. So first of all, we'll just rotate it like so. Somehow that, GY, then RY, RZ, and RX, and something like that should be good. There's just a bit more tweaking left. And I'm going to do one more thing, and that is press RX, and then X again. I've got the wrong direction, so RY, and then Y again, so pressing Y twice. And we're just twisting it, uh, so something like that. Then GZ, to move down on the Z axes, RY, GX, and GZ again. Okay, so I think something like that should be good. Then 325 finishes at 330, I think. Check the rig, just to double check, and yep, 3.30, so we'll select this, as you can see, 3.15, we'll just copy and paste that, so A to deselect, control K to select the one keyframe, then shift D, G, X, and we want to move it up to 3.30, so G, X, 15, and press enter, so frame 320, I'm going to realign everything, G, X, and then R, Y, GX again, GY, RZ, and we'll just do something like that. So we're going to go along, I think, we'll check the rig again, and it starts at frame 330, that's when it finishes, and 335 is when the animation actually starts. So 335, I'll select this, and it really doesn't move too much. What I think I might do is get this hand here on the left, and I'll just make that let go of this gun completely and just have the uh, right hand holding it. So I'm going to press GZ, move it down, RZ, uh, and just tweak it so it's sort of like before but only really being held in this hand at the moment because uh, this one sort of let go of it. So something like that. Then the next frame here, if we press the up arrow, is 340. So we'll select this, move it down a bit, and we'll just tweak it like so. Let's hope we haven't changed too much, so... Something like that's good. It's been doing a bit of funny rotating, so we'll go to frame 335. Maybe rotate it that way. And maybe we'll have to actually rotate it the other way. So maybe something like that. Then go to frame 340. And we'll rotate it something like that again. Okay, so it's a bit smoother. We'll go to frame 345. I'm guessing the next one is... Nope, it's 350. So we'll do that. Then I'll press GZ to move it down on the Z axes. And by this time the gun will have also sort of started to flop or to fall possibly, so um, we'll bring it down here, Rx, uh, Ry, um, Rx again, Gz, and move it down into the bottom corner, like so, Gy, Gz, Gx, so something like that, okay, and then Rz, and I'm going to press Z twice to do it on the local axes and just spin it around like that and GX and GY and GZ so something like that so that gun sort of flopping a little then on the rig again next one's 360 so well right now we have a really weird frame where it's almost inside the body, the hand we'll just have the gun sort of being where it's meant to be so we'll rotate it around the X axes move it over and we'll just have it where the sort of hand used to be except flop down a little so GZ okay so he's holding it RZ move it across RY oh RY and then RX again and we'll just have it 
something like that. And the next one I'm guessing is 370. I will check the rig just to double check. Yep. So then we'll move this down again. And right now it's at his feet, I think. So I'll rotate it something like that. And then our X. And maybe our Y will make it sort of flop in this direction. And something like that. GY, GX, GZ. And we'll just, you know, tweak it off to the side a bit like that. Then the next one, 380, I'm guessing. Yep. So check the rig again. 380 is fine. And we'll just, you know, I think his hands move forward if it has done anything. Yeah, sort of s slid forward like that. And that might be a bit far. And we'll move it this way a bit more as well. And because his hands sort of come out from under his body, we'll have rotated the gun again a little bit like that. So, our Y one more time, our X, and we'll just have it sort of facing into the floor. So something like that. And then I think 390 is a restart. And we'll just uh, duplicate that to 390 so we'll press A to deselect in this window then we'll press Control K and then we'll press Shift D G X and we want to move it all the way to 90 so that would be 75 so G X 75 and then we'll press enter and that will move it all the way over here to 390 and I think the next one's frame 400 check the rig to double check yep and so we have them sort of halfway the whole way down. So 400. We'll get this and we'll start to animate it. So GZ. Move on the Z axes. RX. Then RY. Um, and RZ. RY again. And we'll move it down just a bit, like so. I think we want to get this main corner in. So I'm going to press RY and then press Y again. We'll twist it a bit. GX and then X again. Move it down a bit. GY and then Y again. And run to wave something like that. At the original frame though, 390 does look a bit far down. So I'm going to move it down just a little bit. Not too much. Uh, so frame 400 and then next one's 410. But we'll check the rig just in case. Yep, uh, 410. This is quite a bit of movement, so I'm going to try press number seven. We can't see anything anyway, so we'll just have to move it uh, by rotating around. So GY, GX, GY. Then we'll press RY, um, GZ, GY, GX, GZ and RY, GZ again, something like that should be good, it's something similar to what we had before, 420 for the next one, yeah it seems fairly smooth, so 420, double check the rig, always as you can see the next two are a lot closer together, so we'll have to watch out for that, 420, uh, and then we'll press GY, GZ, GX, press RY, GX, and GY, GZ, RZ again, RY, and we'll move it along a bit like so. Okay, I think that's somewhere where we had it before, although I might actually rotate it again to the player's right hand a bit more. So RX, then GY, GX, GZ, GY and something like that. Okay, and then the next one I think is 325. Yep, checking by the rig, and that has moved down a heap. So we'll put that all together again. This would have hit the floor by now, or maybe not, close to it. So we'll move it somewhere around here. Just GY, oh, GZ. Move it around like that. GX and then RY, RZ, and we'll move it around like so. The next one is 430, so move it over here, and by now I think he's hit the ground. Yep, or well, his hands are almost below the ground. 
So if we check the rig, yeah, it's just before they flop. What I might actually do is at 430, his arms are a lot lower than they should be. So I'm going to quickly go into pose mode, select both of them, press numpad 3, and move them up a bit. Something like that. On top of that, I'm also going to select both arms, and we're going to bring them above the floor. So maybe just even just here. And yeah, that should be fine. So back into object mode, select the gun, and we'll move it down here. So something like that. Again, most of the enemy's bodies over it, so I don't think you'll be able to see much of what's happening. Plus, it'd be fairly fast. So something like that. I think the next one's 440. We'll just check with the armature. Yep. So. But then, if he falls on it, it uh, could have rotated. His arm seems to rotate outwards, so GX and RZ, RY, GX again, RZ, and GX. And we'll just bring it, you know, holding um, as if he's holding onto his gun, like so. So, I think something like that should be good. How oh, about somehow that could work? So, he falls down drops his gun and it does seem to sort of slide out the side but we could actually just have it stay where it was originally I think that might be a better spot so I'll just quickly move it back down here to where it sort of was before it just falls on it like so okay so something like that should be good now we have all the animations for our gun that did take quite a long time but again animations are a very fundamental piece of AI and gaming in general that was just something we were going to have to eventually do anyway so now we have all the animations done pretty much now what we're going to do is just before I end part two is we're going to add in a movement system so this is basically when the player here or the enemy is idle and we can have him you know walking around in a certain pattern so the first thing I'm going to do is press shift s cursor to center I'm going to get rid of this because we're done animating and then I'm going to press shift a at a plane press s to scale this is going to be the floor he's on and then I'm going to do one more thing and that is turn off the record button here turn off the location here and I'm going to remove the keyframes we just added to the plane here Okay, and we'll just check for the cube, that doesn't have any sort of keyframes, which is good. Uh, and only the rig and the gun should have keyframes. So, the rest looks uh, fine. So now what we're going to do is we'll move this up and give us a bit more visibility down here. And this plane should be fine. I'm going to select actor, so it's sort of a, you know, actor, it is the floor. We don't want just things falling through it. Uh, and then you can call it floor if you want like so. Then the next thing I'm going to do is press shift A and I'm going to add a cube and then I'm going to move it over here and I guess I'll just call this target 1. So target 1. Or maybe we should make this uh, routine 1. Routine 1. Or you can just call it root 1 or something. So this is going to be the first thing that the uh, enemy is sort of attracted to and walks towards. So move it up here, something like that, and this is going to be, um, it could just be static, so uh, it would be an actor and a ghost, and we want it to be invisible, however we'll leave it visible just for now to make sure it's working, then this will have the property, uh, we'll make it something simple, so we'll just call it path, uh, y again you could have called this path1 instead of routine. Uh, just yeah whatever comes up into your head and then I'm going to select this and our enemy movement the thing that's going to be moving around the enemy when it's in state 1 which it currently is in it's going to be always and it's going to be the always joint up to this edit object actuator and then we're going to change that to track 2 and it's going to track to routine 1 uh, and you can add some time to that so it sort of looks like he's curving around the corners or something like that three or four something like that just to smooth it out a bit so it isn't instant and then on top of that we're also going to add a motion and this motion is going to be forwards 
if we go local, it's the same. So basically negative y axes, so just a negative 0.1. I'm going to go into texture mode so it looks a bit nicer. Select my lamp here, change it to hemi, turn down the energy just a little bit, so maybe to 0.4, so it looks a bit nicer. And there we go. I'm going to press S to scale, and we'll just move it in. It can actually be through the floor, it's just something that the enemy can touch. Then I'm going to move up my movement cube just to make sure it's off the ground. And there we go. So it's going to track to routine and move forward as well. So now if we press P, he's actually going the opposite way. So what does that mean? That basically means we have our character set up the wrong way. So to fix this, I'm going to go and select the rig, hold down shift, select the gun, then press Alt P, uh, clear parent, and keep transformation. Just like that. I'll select the cube, press R, Z. 180. So to flip it around completely, and we'll select the rig again, hold down shift, select the gun, hold down shift, select the movement cube, so make sure that's yellow, then press control P, and we'll parent them all back together again, like so. So now if we press P, here we go, he's facing the right way but moving in the wrong direction. So this time we can go back into the motion, and this time we just make a positive Y. So now if we press P, there we go, he's moving towards uh, little center there. So there's the first routine one done. Uh, then I'm going to press Shift D and press G Y. Move it over here, and maybe we'll call this one routine two. So routine two, like so. And this is going to be path number two, and it can just be path one, I guess. And then I'm going to press Shift D G X, and this one's going to be routine three. Again, what you could also do is just call this a routine instead of path, uh, but we just want different ones for each one, so this one's going to be number three. And then I'm going to do one last one, which is going to be over here. So then I'm going to rename that one to path three as well, matching the routine. Then I'm going to do one last thing and press Shift D, G, Y, and move the last one over here. So we sort of have a square for our character to move around in. And this one's going to be called routine four. Okay, and that's going to be path 4 as well, like so. Now we're going to down here add a collision sensor, and this is if it collides with the first one, so when it collides with routine 1, or it's just called path 1 here. So I'll go to our movement and type in path 1. Then what we want it to do is add an edit object, and then we want to change it to track 2, and this time it's going to track to routine 2 instead. So it will minimize all those. There we go, routine 2, and it's going to be doing their movement again. Like so. And if we press P, you can see our player walks to the first one and gets to it, and then he's not sure which one to go to and just sits in front of the first one he went to. And that is due to this one being a collision and then an always. The always will eventually take over from the collision if the collision isn't true continuously. So to fix this for our character is I'm going to add a game property uh, and this is going to be an integer and we'll just call this path. Sort of just to match the properties we've given all the different routines. And it's going to be set on zero by default and then instead of an always we're going to add a property here and when path is equal to zero uh, on a true pulse, so we'll set that to true, then it's going to go to routine one and it'll be moving constantly as well. So we'll move that up there. Now if it does collide with path one, or this one right here, routine one, then what we want to do, instead of moving to the next one, what we want it to do is add a property on this side and it's going to assign path to two, like so and then we'll just join the two together and now we'll add another property here and this is going to be when path is equal to two on a true pulse so I might want to make these um, I'm going to type in path equal to one just so I know what they are when I minimize them and this one's going to be when path one so we know it's a collision, so we know when it's colliding with path 1. This one's going to be when path is equal to 2 on a true pulse. Then we'll add an AND controller, join that to that. 
and then here we want to join the edit object as well as the motion again okay and now we'll add a collision again this time for path 2 so path 2 and we'll type in path 2 here and click out minimize that and an add controller join that to that add a property on this side and this is going to assign uh, path to 3 this time instead of 2 and, and we'll add a property on this side when path is equal to 3 on a true pulse then we'll add an and actuator or oh, and controller join the two together and we'll call this when path is equal to 3 and we'll join the two together add an and controller this time we want to add an edit object again and this is going to track to, uh, I think, routine 4 we want it, don't we? This one was routine 2? Nope. Routine 3, I think. Yep, when path is equal to 3, so it wants to go to number 3, uh, we'll set it to routine 3. So something like that, and we'll minimize that. And then we'll also join this to the motion again, because we want it moving the whole time. Then we'll add one last collision, and this is for, well, when path 3 collides uh, with path 3 then what it's going to do is it's going to go to the property and it's going to assign path to we'll do a 4 this time and minimize all those and then when property path is equal to 4 so when it's equal to 4 on a true pulse then we'll add an AND actuator here join the two together and this time it's going to be an edit object and it's just going to go back to routine 1 and we'll join the two together it's not going to add the object it's going to track 2 and we can add some time to that as well so maybe 5 we'll do the same here add 5 to it and then 5 over here like so we'll do the last one we'll change it to 5 as well Okay, and we want movement with that as well. And so now we have all four moving nicely. So also what we want to do is once it gets to uh, path four, so when it collides with path four, so we'll just type in path four in the top here. And what we want it to do is we want it to set uh, this back to the starting value. So what we're going to do is it's assigning it to 2, 3, um, 4 as well uh, and the starting value I think was we actually did it as 0 which probably isn't a good starting value so I'm going to change that to 1 because it is path 1 and I'm going to move this integer property up 1 as well and then next thing I'm going to do is here add a property join that up and it's basically going to assign path back to 1 okay like so and now hopefully that should all work so if we press P there we go our characters moving over to the first one collides with it moves over to the second one collides with that moves to the third one and if we're lucky this last one will work as well oh and he's been diverted off to this one over here which is path 1 instead of path 4 so path 3 when our character collides with path 3 so path 3 then it will assign path to 4 when property path is equal to 4 we want it to add an object routine 1 actually we want it to go to routine 4 this time not routine 1 that's why it was funny and yep that should work fine now so we'll try it again press P but there we go and there is the last one and there we go back to the start so cool we have a constant loop going which is awesome now what you can also do is you can move these in random areas like so they don't have to be in a perfect square and our character will still find them so there we go we have our nice little idle thing going, but our character isn't moving at all. So one more thing I'm going to do is turn this time up to maybe 10 to make it look a bit more natural. Um, 
just the delay time before it tracks the next object so 10 on this one and 10 on the last one like so and we'll just watch this first corner to see what it's like yeah somehow that's fine okay and then the next thing we want to do is select our rig here add a action this is going to be for enemy rig action and it's going to start at frame 20 and uh, I think it ends at frame 120 I'm guessing, yep so start at frame 20 end at frame 120 and then we'll hold down shift select the movement cube and uh, now I want to make this window bigger so we can see what we're doing scroll in a bit and basically what we want is when path is equal to 1 we want it moving when path is equal to 2 we want it moving so just join up all the properties when path is equal to 3 we want it moving and when path is equal to 4 we want it moving as well and we can just call this walking and we'll minimize it like so and that should be it although no we still have our animation for our gun while he's walking it's only very subtle but it's still there so we'll select our gun add an action for that it's going to be gun action might be number 001 because I think we deleted the original which was at frame 0 so they'll be starting at frame 20 ending at frame 120 and there we go then we'll hold down shift, select the movement cube and make this window bigger again and we'll just join it up to the same one, so the first one then the next one here which joins up to this then we'll join up path 3 to this one as well and the last one path 4 okay and that should be it so bring it down, A to deselect go to frame 0, restart all animations and press P and there we go, we have our character moving. All we can do now is select our movement cube, go to the physics, make it invisible, and we can select each of these points here, make them invisible, oh, make them invisible as well. So there is one thing that needs tweaking, and that is if we look at the gun, it sort of snaps uh, at the end of each animation. And that is due to us not copying the starting frame and putting it in the end position. So I'm going to select my gun here, frame 20, we want the same frame to be at frame 120. I'm going to select this, select frame 20, make a new window here, select graph editor, move this across, A to deselect everything, make sure you're on frame 20, then press Control K, and then Shift D, G, X, and we want it to 120, so 100, like so, press Enter and that will overwrite the previous one, so now his gun animation uh, is looping like so. Okay, so there we go, we have our enemy walking around in a set pattern. If you did have a more complex map where you wanted him moving around in more than just four positions, what you could do is down here, obviously you could just assign the path to five, six, seven, uh, so on, depending on how many more dots you want, and then obviously changing the edit object joining it back to the motion and just uh, reassigning the properties again. So hopefully you guys also have a working enemy AI who walks around in a cool little circle. If you don't, there will be a link in the description for the finished dot blend if you want to go ahead and get that. But otherwise, that's the end of part two. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like or a comment. Any support is greatly appreciated. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Have an awesome week and I'll see you guys in the next one.